Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants Addiction. And today, we need to talk about Kurt Vonnegut. Essentially, this video is gonna be my theory on why I think Kurt Vonnegut is a rape apologist. Now, I know that's a very bold claim to make. And to be honest with you, I really kind of was very hesitant to want to do this video. The simple reason being that the last video that I did that was similar to this where I talked about why I think Stephen King is a racist, um, people really came for me. Literally every single, almost every single comment that I got on that video was a negative comment. And it wasn't just a negative comment, it was stuff that was personally attacking and insulting me. Like there were no counter arguments or no one was actually addressing the points that I made. They were just calling me names and insulting my appearance. <laughs> so obviously at the time I was in the mindset of, well, you aren't making, you aren't making a valid point. Um, you came onto my channel and my video and you didn't have anything constructive to say and you're calling me names and I have the right to protect myself against that. So I basically deleted all those hate comments. But if you go onto that video and you look at the likes, you will see that it is one of the most uh, divisive videos I think on my channel. If you go and look at the, the ratio of likes to dislikes, I, I think it's pretty obvious. So I'm hesitant to do the same thing again and call out what I feel is a very popular author who has, you know, a lot of fanboys and a lot of people that feel that he is above criticism. Because I personally don't believe, no matter how successful an author is, I don't think that they're above criticism. And I'm a very critical reader, I would say. So when I see things wrong, I want to point them out. And this being my first exposure to Kurt Vonnegut as well, I was really taken aback because I feel like I've been told my entire life just from culture and literature and seeing his name, knowing his name even without ever having read him and seeing Slaughterhouse-Five be on all these, you know, top lists, classics to read before you die, things like that. Like everyone knows what Slaughterhouse-Five is. So I really went into this expecting someone, I guess, with just a lot of integrity and that was not what I found in the short, short story collection. So I was really disappointed. So here I am trying to balance between, well, should I make this video and call it out because I don't see anyone else talking about it? And do I really need more hate comments on my channel? Do I really need to be attracting more haters? But see, the thing is now, if, if I was to put out a video like that and get such a negative response to it, I would leave those comments. The reason for that being that I want people to see that they didn't have anything to say except for like things about me. Like attacking me is not the same as attacking my argument. And I also think, you know, I don't, if I don't see anyone else talking about it, if I'm afraid to make the video, I'm not like afraid of the backlash for making a video, that's probably the exact video that I should be making because people aren't talking about this. I haven't heard anything about this. And I was just like really disappointed when I finally sat down to read them and I was just like, big yikes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this video despite the, the the backlash that might happen. So where I chose to start with Vonnegut, well, it's not really the place that I think most people start with him. I've never read Slaughterhouse-Five and for some reason I didn't really feel like starting there. I started with Welcome to the Monkey House, which is a collection of his short stories. And I kind of did this for two reasons. Number one is I was reading a book um, sort of an introductory book about socialism that mentioned the short story Harrison Bergeron, which is by him. And talking about how it was kind of like anti-socialist propaganda, <laughs> essentially. And I also remembered reading that story from school. So I kind of wanted to go back and read for myself and sort of develop my own thoughts. And then the other reason was that it was recommended to me by a friend. So I went into it, you know, not knowing a whole lot. But to be honest with y'all, I was getting bad vibes right from the very beginning. Like I was getting a lot of like sexism, misogyny, type vibes as I was reading. And, you know, it wasn't really anything super, super major, but there were definitely little hints along the way. For example, in the story, Who Am I This Time? I really felt that the main woman in that story was just a frigid woman stereotype, which, you know, is obviously associated with misogyny, this idea that, you know, women are cold and unfeeling. I also noticed that Vonnegut tends to describe women always in terms of their attractiveness, like they're either very, very attractive or very ugly. And so that description really bothered me a lot because it really bothers me when a woman is only important to the story when she's super attractive. If you're only talking about women in terms of their attractiveness and no other qualities about them other than what they look like and whether or not they appeal to you, 
I'm sorry, but that just leads me to suspect misogyny. Even in the story Harrison Bergeron, Harrison Bergeron, the, the title character, says on, on live TV that the first ballerina to take off their mask and dance with him freely will be his wife. And I'm kind of just there like, you literally just walked into this room of women you don't even know and said the first one to show her face was gonna be your wife. Like, it just screams primitive, chest beating, me Tarzan, you Jane type of shit that I really didn't like. <laughs> And, you know, that was only the second story of the collection. So then, then the next thing was The Frigid Woman. And then finally, I got to the title story. Welcome to the Monkey House. And all of my suspicions about Vonnegut being a misogynist and a sexist were confirmed. In addition to the fact that I think he's a rape apologist. And to explain why I think this, I'm going to have to explain a little bit of what this short story actually entails. So, in Welcome to the Monkey House, it is a story about a future America. And in this future, we are severely overpopulated. So in order to combat this, there are two things that have been developed. First one is something called ethical birth control, which is this mandatory pill every single person has to take. Now, it doesn't stop you from being able to have sex. It simply numbs you from the waist down so that you get absolutely zero pleasure out of it, which of course, if you're not getting any pleasure out of it, most people are not gonna feel the desire to have sex and therefore, the population would go down. That's measure number one. Measure number two is uh, there are these ethical suicide parlors where basically you can go in and choose to be euthanized for the good of the country, nation, the population, whatever. Okay, so far, nothing wrong, right? Like every person, regardless of gender, has to take the ethical birth control. Cool. And then we find out that these suicide parlors are run exclusively by women, the women nurses, they're all virgins. They all wear these kind of, uh, what I would describe as a provocative outfit. Okay, so you, you got all these women working there and there is a criminal that's on the loose called Billy the Poet. And what he does is he goes around visiting these suicide parlors and then kidnaps nurses. Then after he kidnaps the nurses, he basically has them stop taking their ethical birth control, waits for it to wear off, and then performs corrective rape on them. So yes, yes, you heard that correctly. For some reason, you have to be a virgin to work at the suicide parlor. Don't ask me what that has to do with it. And then not only that, you have to wear the outfit. And then thirdly, you got Billy the Poet running around performing corrective rape on people. The problem that I have with this is that Billy the Poet is positioned as the hero of this story. And the idea is that by raping these women, he is setting them free from a soulless, sexless society. And I have more than a few fucking problems with this framing of a sexless society as something soulless or that's automatically evil. I think first of all, um, it implies that sex or a life without sex is meaningless, worthless, soulless. And I don't agree with that premise, uh, that he's implying that, it, that it's unnatural to not want to have sex. Because where does this leave people who are celibate? Where does this leave people who are asexual? I, I call bullshit. So, so not only are we discounting entire groups of people and basically just saying that their existence is bullshit, which I know some of y'all are gonna come from me being like, this was 1968 when he published this. There was, we didn't know asexuality, blah, 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 whatever. True. But just because it wasn't a mainstream thing and this was written in the past, doesn't mean it's right. My second problem with the framing of this corrective rape. I think it would have been a different story had Billy the poet simply taken these women off of the birth control and then allowed them to make their own choices about whether or not they wanted to have sex, who they want to have sex with, and just kind of letting them adjust in their own time rather than forcing himself on them. All of them, every single one. And his excuse is, there's just no other way. There's just no other way to make you realize what you're missing. Literally, yes, there is. You could literally just set them free and let them decide for themselves. But that is the point in the story for me when he crossed over from being someone that could potentially be on the right side of things to a villain. He decided he needed to personally rape them for their own good. I don't like that narrative. I don't like that type of language surrounding what is a rape. And I think Vonnegut's positioning of him as this very sympathetic figure and even the title, Billy the Poet. Um, he's the only one in the story that has this type of title. The way that he's lifted above the other characters. The, the narrative centers around him. Like, I do not like the positioning of a rapist as a hero. I just 
do not. And I think it's pretty clear that Billy is a rape apologist because he says, you know, classic, classic justifications for justifications for rape. Such as it's on your it's for your own good. You secretly want it. This is just the way it's always been. Because he drives, tries to draw the comparison between what he does and what traditionally happens on American wedding nights or what used to happen. I, I, I can't even begin to address how fucked up this is. I don't, I, don't, I don't know where to start. The assumption that every wedding night was a rape and then also the fact that just because something's been a tradition or been established for so long that we should keep doing it, that's an excuse for you to behave however you want. I think not. The longevity of something doesn't determine whether it's right or not. So we have these classic rape apologist excuses that he tries to justify what he does to this character. And then the other thing I don't like is that the rape is described very euphemistically. It's, it's very skimmed over. It happens so, so quickly in the story that's just glossed over. And some of you would be like, oh, it's actually a good thing he didn't go into detail because I don't want to read that, I don't want to see that. I'm not saying he should have gone into deep, deep detail or used it for exploitation or shock value or anything like that. I'm just saying it's disturbing the way that it was glossed over so quickly and he didn't talk at all about the woman being in pain. He didn't talk about it all from her, from her perspective. I don't think he even thought about her. I don't think Billy the Poet thought about her. I don't think Kurt Vonnegut thought about her. <laughs> you know, like she was just a non-agent in this. It was just something that was just happening to her. There was no empathy for her. And I think that's what really disturbed me. It was just a quick act. And then the clincher for me, the fact that in the middle of the rape, Kurt Vonnegut feels the need to praise Billy's sexual prowess is just beyond fucking abominable to me. Like that is so inappropriate, like so inappropriate. I know someone's gonna make the argument. Well, everything that an author does in a story, like you can write a villain in your story and not be a villain yourself. Just because a character holds views doesn't mean you hold those views. But again, going back to the framing, it is the way that this character and his rapes are framed that really makes me think it was not only Billy the Poet that had this mindset, it was Kurt Vonnegut as well. And the fact that he, instead of focusing on this woman's pain or discomfort or fear at all, he praises the sexual prowess of the man that he frames as the hero as he is raping her. That is just too much. <laughs> That's too much for me and it's frankly unbelievable. I, I could not believe what I was fucking reading. So you can tell me all you want, you know. This is satire. You know, he doesn't really mean this. The whole point of the story is that it's welcome to the monkey house. The world is upside down. It's backwards. It's crazy. It's satire. He doesn't mean it. He's just making fun of it. He's just poking fun of things. I think he absolutely does mean it because look at the context. Look at the way that he talks about women in all his other stories. Look at the way he always describes them in terms of attractiveness. Look at Harrison, Harrison Bergeron where, of course, the man... In the, in the couple, there's a man and a woman watching TV. Of course the woman is the stupid one. She doesn't need to have the sounds played in her head to distract her from her thoughts because she's dumb already. And the man is the hyper intelligent one. Um, so just look at little things like that. And then look at the framing of the, the Billy the Poet as a hero in the story and the way his rape is characterized as a heroic action, the way that he gives excuses for what he does and his behavior. It may be satire, it may be intended to be satire, but I think the author's own views are showing through. And so I was just really disturbed by this. <laughs> I was really not expecting that. Giving him the benefit of the doubt, I went on to the next story, Long Walk to Forever. Much to my surprise, I found more of this no means yes rhetoric in his writing because there is a woman, a man that she's known for a while comes back to visit her, and he kind of assumes that even though she's saying, no, I don't want to get with you, be with you, I am getting married. He's like, oh, that definitely means she wants me to kiss her. No, no means no, <laughs> that's not consent. So it was clear to me that this mentality, this rapist, sexual assault, misogyny, sexism mentality was going to be a theme throughout these stories and was going to continue. So I discontinued <laughs> reading that collection. <laughs> It was too far, it's too much. And I just could not believe a, a writer that's so beloved and upheld or whatever was so, so, so wrong, at least in my opinion. And I already know I'm gonna have someone coming on here being like, but you've talked about liking problematic authors before. And it is true. I have talked about how I enjoy Charles Bukowski's work. I have also talked about liking Chuck Palahniuk, certain, certain things of his. But the thing about that is, <sighs> For example, Charles Bukowski. When I talk about him, I feel like I talk about both the positives and the negatives in his work. 
when I reviewed Post Office on this channel, I talked about how I liked that he has such a sympathy and an understanding for and a love for the working class, the lower class, and just this huge heart. But I also talked about how terribly misogynist I felt that book was. And I called out a lot of things and a lot of moments where he does these things against women that I don't like or talks about women in terms that I don't like. So positives and negatives. For me, it's about a balance of does this person do more good or convey more good than they do harm? Or is the harm to me outweighing the good? And that's honestly a personal decision. I may have just started at a bad place with Kurt Vonnegut and this was my first exposure to him and then I was like, whoa. You know, maybe if I had started with Slaughterhouse-Five, I wouldn't have felt the same, but that's just where I ended up. And from what I'm seeing here, I don't really feel a desire to continue with the author. It's one thing I feel like in works to have to read past a little bit of misogyny or ignore a little bit of misogyny because as women, we are so used to that being commonplace that I feel like, although it's very fucked up and it shouldn't be, it's not as shocking as some other things are. That's not to say being a rape apologist isn't just as bad as being a misogynist. They're both bad. But for me, I think it's easier to see past some misogyny in a work because it's everywhere saturating our society, whether we realize it or not all the time. It's easier for me to see past that than it is for me to see past something like this where the rape, the corrective rape, is a major part of the storyline and it's being framed as something heroic and good and right to do. So yeah, an offhanded comment or two about women is one thing. An entire story hinging around a rapist as the hero is a whole different thing to me. But yeah, so because we live in a world that's so saturated with this, a lot of works that I read and a lot of authors I like are misogynists. And if they aren't misogynists, they have a lot of misogynist, misogynistic tendencies in their writing and their characters, sexism, etc. Not saying it's right, not saying it's good, not saying I'm cool with it. I'm just saying this was on a whole nother level for me. So that is it. That is my case for why I feel that based on what I've read of Kurt Vonnegut's work, which admittedly is not very much compared to his output, that's why I feel like he's a rape apologist. What are your guys' opinions on this? Have you read Kurt Vonnegut? Will you now that you've seen what I have to say on it? I would love to hear the other side of this. I would love to hear some actual counter arguments rather than personal attacks. Cause like, I'm not trying to start shit. I just, I have a problem with this. This is really problematic. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.